Success Mantra is a program which features people, successful individuals from various walks of life. They are less known heroes who believe in their dreams and have conviction to live their full potential. Idols, icons, innovators who care to live every moment on their own terms. Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of Success Mantra and uh, in these various programs we have been featuring people from various walks of life who are not only COVID warriors and uh, who have done a lot for society but uh, also they have professions which are making a lot of difference to mankind. Today we have somebody really, uh, you know, like uh, uh, very, very supportive to all her patients and uh, she has been a remarkable human being as well. Uh, Dr. Anshum uh, Aneja Arora, consultant pulmonologist, All India gold medalist in respiratory medicine and fellow of American Society of Chest Physicians. So it is such a blessing that in this times of COVID and uh, various pandemic uh, that's hitting the world across, we have such a person with us who is going to not only talk about herself but enlighten us a little more about what we can do right during these times. So welcome Anshom, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Inhali. Thank you. It's, it's really a pleasure to have you on Success Mantra where uh, we feature people like you who have been making a lot of difference to the world. Uh, before we go ahead, I just, uh, you know, for the benefit of our audience, if you could just tell a little bit about yourself and how you came into this practice. Yeah, okay. So, um, greetings, greetings from Gurgaon. Um, so, I'm a practicing pulmonologist at Gurgaon and uh, I think now pulmonology is so, so popular thanks to COVID that everybody understands what it is. So, I deal with chest medicine and uh, respiratory diseases. So as an introduction, I think um, it started um, in the year uh, 2002, you know, when uh, I completed my uh, schooling and um, my parents were my, uh, you know, back pressure behind you. I, we think that you have the caliber of becoming a doctor and you should go into wow. medicine. And then when I joined my uh, medical school, uh, I completed... Um, my MBBS and I, I was very inspired by some of my female uh, professors actually, you know, uh, who was a pulmonologist. So uh, the passion with which you would see the patients and the love and the warmth, you know, that really caught my attention. And um, I know I'm not trying to be gender biased, but there was a lot of female people, uh, you know, females who had a lot of influence on me because I could correlate so well uh, somehow with them and um, so one of those professors in my pediatrics actually and I knew that this is where I want to be I have to join medicine and that's 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 my branch so worked upon it um, got into medicine in chest medicine and years and years and years of training and um, that's where I am today and so it's almost 10 years now um, since I'm, I'm here in this field and I'm enjoying it. And I, and I think um, seeing my patients happy, I think I'm doing justice to it and just pray that every day I am able to do that better. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, so, you know, Anshum, we also see that you're a gold medalist and, uh, you know, very, uh, what should I say, very academically oriented. So is that how you were always or is it the passion for your subject which uh, kind of triggered this? Yeah, I would say I, I was a bit ambitious uh, ever since, you know. Uh, when I joined uh, medical school, I went there with a purpose. So for me, every day, you know, it was... Um, it was reminding myself again that my parents have sent me and I have come here for a reason. So every day counts, every second counts. So I would do, I would balance everything in life. You know, I, I always wanted to do that. So I would have fun, I would enjoy my teens and yet studies were very important. So I think academically um, that was there, which helped me. I 
kind of topped all my university exams right uh, you know from my second professional onwards so that was always a you know push the uh, the teachers were happy the parents were happy right. so it's kind of a positive feedback that you keep getting but at the same time i think that not everybody can hold a same position everybody mm-hmm. cannot be on that position and uh, i don't think position is what counts mm-hmm. it's just that if you want to do something there are various ways to approach it so mm-hmm. um, some of my friends may not have got those top positions but they're doing really well in their practice even now mm-hmm. because they know what they're dealing with and they are excelling in their field so mm-hmm. yes um, being a gold medalist and all it adds it helps but i don't think that's the only criteria for being successful or being happy in what you're doing wonderful wonderful so you know from my personal experience you were like a god sent uh, person for us when uh, of course oh, you. you know my husband went through his challenges uh, almost 3 yes. 4 years back right we as we yeah. got introduced and of course my daughter got so influenced by you that uh, she is very keen on pursuing medicine and uh, oh, she knows that me so you you are definitely very inspiring doctor not only because you inspire others but also because of the style of uh, work that you do you know uh, the approach that you have in explaining in going into the depth of things and not superficially treating uh, was absolutely amazing and fantastic that we came across and uh, i i still uh you know feel bad about leaving gurgaon because uh, one of my trusted doctors i'm missing in bangalore uh so yeah. fantastic so one of the Thank things um, yeah absolutely so one of the things which um, i i you know take this opportunity uh, to ask you especially in these times when the pandemic has hit uh, the entire world and stuff what is your perspective about covid and uh, how you know like you feel that your patients could deal with it better yeah so uh, see for us covid um, it is something that was long pending i think you know mm-hmm. there are so many viral diseases otherwise also in the world that um, people were not giving due attention to what hygiene what uh, you know good practices mean we got so carried away with humanity and so soci- you know socially adjusting to the norms of society that we actually became very irresponsible so covid uh, is for me it's just another viral disease but this virus is the one which has taught the society that you know we have to start behaving nicely now mm-hmm. um patients as such they just have to be mindful of the basics mm-hmm. if you in your day to day living are able to take care of general hygiene of you know covering your mouth when you cough sneezing you know, just cover it with your arm if people start doing it in everyday life then viral diseases will be much less and history dictates that every century you know it's the natural selection process mm-hmm. nature will take over at some point of time and if you are not on track if you are not justifying yourself in this world then it will take a toll so uh, i think this is a learning lesson and if you see the positive aspect out of it people will really start living a healthier and better life post covid yes it's a very very tough time because it hit us at the wrong time you know um and the winters were approaching mm. so the casualties were more and people were not ready with it mm. but um i think now from uh, henceforth i think we'll have healthier lives because now we know how to you know deal with it so for my patients also you know i just keep advising them i tell them that if your immunity is low you take more precautions but you have to get ahead with your normal life mm-hmm. and do that with the precautions you'll be fine sure and um, it's not that everybody will have a severe covid infection mm-hmm. most of the patients have mild to moderate infections and they recover very soon most people nowadays who are coming to us don't even know they had covid 
they're just coming with some post covid cough and incidentally on their investigations we were able to detect that they had covid so uh, now the mortality and everything is much less because we know how to deal better with it right. and uh, it will also start passing off like a flu which was at one point of time again a pandemic sure. you know across nations it was there and now we we know that we get vaccinated each year for it and we mm. we should mm. be fine yeah. so it's just a learning lesson in life i think covid and uh, yes uh, my heart uh, you know breaks for the people who've lost their family members mm-hmm. but um, it's natural selection the nature has taken its toll that's that's all it is sure and the other thing is while the vaccine uh, is in its way and stuff there's a lot of discussion uh, stating that there'll be different strains uh, so is the vaccine really going to be impactful to address the different strains right so uh, see uh, viruses are known to mutate so mm-hmm. all viral vaccines also evolve as we evolve every year there is a new vaccine which is uh, circulated in the world a different one for northern hemisphere a different one for southern hemisphere according to what strain is in circulation mm-hmm. same thing is going to happen with the coronavirus vaccine as well right oh. but it is in such initial stages at this point of time that even to give a vaccine in such in such a short period of time for the scientists i think it's a big big feat to be able to achieve that efficacy by doing trials to hastening the process and uh, believe me when they do trials they have stricter rules mm-hmm. you know and there are so many levels at which inspections are being made sure. that you just can't deliver any product and mm-hmm. sometimes you can't predict all adverse events over this 6 month one one uh, year vaccination trial also so that will come with all vaccines forever Mm-hmm. and um, this vaccine however if it's able to give us the needed protection so that this disease comes at some control i think it's doing a good job and we will we will be seeing more vaccines coming up and every year when we get vaccinated we might have a new strain being added sure. so i it's difficult to say whether it will cover the south africa strain or the uk strain mm-hmm. uh because we don't have trials for that we haven't tested people for that sure. but overall uh, not everybody will have an infection by that strain so yeah. it will still cover the masses it will still cover a majority of people so it's a evolution process by itself yes yes that's yes. true wonderful wonderful so uh, you know like we have seen your journey and your trajectory in terms of achieving all these various um, things in terms of your academic and your personal life and of course dealing with such things uh, at large in the medical industry what does success really mean to you amidst all of this so i think it all um, success boils down to a state where you feel proud of what you're doing mm-hmm. and you know you're emotionally joyous about your life you mm-hmm. you feel the purpose of your life has been solved or you're on the right path mm-hmm. for me success would not be in terms of fame it's not in terms of your monetary stability mm-hmm. you know uh, or your position mm-hmm. it's it's about how content you are mm-hmm. and if you feel content in a, a small um, in in your small means you're successful then as well but success also involves a constant effort and never say you know never die kind of a feeling right. the complacency i think should not be there mm-hmm. you should be happy about where you are and you are successful but then you should keep trying to do you know a bit better just a bit more and that's that's how it is and you can maintain your success that way wow very well said that uh, you know the purpose and the content really define the way you lead your successful journey because it's it's not just one achievement by itself but the regular uh, you know efforts in terms of doing the best in your field 
uh, fantastic and what are the traits in your life traits or behaviors which you feel has really helped you maintain this consistent effort consistent successes that you have been drawing to yourself and so uh, i think uh, these traits should be our basic virtues you know um, of hard work of uh, dedication you know mm-hmm. honesty in what you're doing honesty to to the system where you are working mm. honesty to yourself that mm. you are doing justice to what you are meant to be doing right and gratitude for what you have already achieved if you mm. have those traits if you if you feel that you have been doing the hard work you mm. will end up getting success someday it may be late it may be delayed mm-hmm. uh, there may be failures but then if you are hard working if you are dedicated you will reach there and when you have that gratitude where you feel thankful for everything that you've achieved mm-hmm. success is definitely guaranteed you 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 if you the ego you know mm-hmm. it has to be kept under control and you will definitely reach success beautiful beautiful i i think uh, you know this element of gratitude is uh, something which uh, you know is very important that we most often forget right because even yes. during covid times uh, people were like okay i am in a generation where i'm going through this why why am i facing this right whereas there are a lot of benefits also like you said has come through this understanding of how to live a, a good life which is uh, not only you know helping you progress but which is good for the environment uh, that's something that we have started understanding great and what's been your biggest achievement uh, in life so far well uh, that's a tough one um, so uh, so as you said uh, it wouldn't be you know for me there's no one landmark that mm. i would say that this has helped me succeed uh, definitely um, you know when you work down your academic career and you know then there are things like uh, being being on top or mm. achieving a gold medal and everything that's definitely one of your biggest achievements in life mm. but for me uh, professionally i think whenever whenever i'm able to heal someone who who has some illness anything and when he comes back to me and he says that uh, yes doctor it worked and i'm fine now i think that's that's more than enough so so i think when when i get that feeling that i did make a difference i was on the right path and um, i thank god that um, thank you for giving me the insight that he has this kind of a problem and for helping me make the right decision for him i think that's the day that i feel like another achievement another feather in my cap beautiful so so that's the way i take it wonderful uh, it's really interesting that you know like uh, coming from a science background and being a medical practitioner you spoke about god right so very often we kind of you know get into that path where we say okay you know everything is driven by science right so even in medicine i think uh, reliance on uh, this you know unknown power of god is uh, very very critical yes uh, it is it is a holistic uh, approach you know and uh, uh, so i'm quoting a very very famous institute narayana netralaya you know their um, they their commandment is your faith shall heal you okay so that that's also something that has really put a big mark on my my life your mm-hmm. faith shall heal you mm-hmm. so i think you just can't get away from faith it it can be in the form of god it can mm-hmm. be in the form of something you know you mm-hmm. may want to meditate you may not mm-hmm. believe in uh, an entity called god but mm-hmm. if you believe that there is something that is controlling everything something that may make things better for you Mm. that that's very important and uh, for our patients also you know for the mm. patients who are very sick who are in icus who are terminally ill you know that faith mm. you know, that i am i am uh, actually praying and my somebody is praying for me and they're working it works wonders they come out of a lot of um, bigger issues just by holding on to that faith 
so uh, i am a very religious person and i come from a family you know who are very religious so mm-hmm. we do believe that um, it's important to have a spiritual element in your life right mm-hmm. if you don't have any spirituality in your life you may you may get overpowered by a lot of ego issues mm-hmm. you may get overpowered by your feeling that you can control everything but you really can't control everything in your life it's it's a bouncy road there yeah. will be ups there will be downs so at least you know if you know you're up you feel elated and you thank right. the universe for helping you in that and when That's you're true. down you pray to the universe that uh, let me go to the upside of the hill mm. i think that works yeah. so that works in every every scenario every aspect absolutely totally believe in that so you know like this is something that i'll definitely remember about our discussion faith your faith shall heal you so very very important yeah, i i am very very yeah. impressed by that line and uh, so it's not my line <laughs> it it is the uh, motto it's it's rather yeah of uh, narayana nitra yeah, bangalore right yeah. right so, right so yeah. in fact uh, recently i've been uh, reading a lot about dr hawkins and uh, you know like he also talks in his research like he is no more but his research talks yeah. about these uh, element of love and above right so mm-hmm. when you the exact element of when you are able to love yourself you have faith you have these prayers in fact they say that your uh immunity increases if you are in prayers and if you have this positive outlook towards life so it's yeah. called the power versus force so power is mm. natural whereas force is always a difficult trajectory in terms of you know like uh, leading life wonderful mm. so um Uh, anshum you know also we all have various role models who inspire us in our journey and who play a whole uh, different role in terms of getting us from where we are to where we want to be so who has yeah. been this uh, person or people in your life yeah so uh, so this one i would actually break down into my um, i would say a professional role model and uh, maybe a role model for my life so um, my parents you know have been my role model for life and for that is everybody is fond of their parents right. i know that but yeah. you know there are some attributes that you learn when you see them as you grow mm. you just imbibe those right so uh, my dad my father he's been very very practical and and he's beyond you know he can do things beyond what anybody would expect out of him he will have a solution for everything and um, never say no you know uh, that kind of attitude uh, that he gave me he, he kept pushing me to simple things you know no no you can drive come on or um, he um, encouraged me to go on a trip alone you know when i was just in i was doing my uh, schooling and uh, i came back from i uh, flew back from us you know on my own and uh, yes uh, he said go on you can do it you know how to go about it so all those things you know pushing me pushing me forward and saying yes you can do it you can do it i think that's one thing that that really pushed me and and he's my role model for for this and uh, my mom my mom you know she's like um, a whole lot of knowledge you know and teaching me right always that um, no matter what happens we know that you've tried hard so right it comes at the end of the day and professionally uh, i i told you about one of my teachers she may not know that uh, she's my role model but uh, yeah that so the care the warmth how how in life you have to be you may be a doctor you may yeah. have studied um, yeah. higher than the person who's sitting next to you yeah. you know but at the end of the day you're a human he's a human and he's come to you with with some kind of expectation so so you have to bow down to the same level to make him feel comfortable you have to be both two humans sitting with one person directing the other person but you can't think of yourself as god and you can't just uh, you know not someone so so i think all these things they are my role models so um, and i look forward to everything that i get from them excellent 
excellent so uh, you know in this journey i'm sure like people uh, traverse while going through their path uh, deal with a lot of failures so have you had any failures any fears how did you deal with them yes so um, so it it is a path where uh, you know you are bound to not receive sometimes what you think mm. you deserve Mm-hmm. uh or uh, things may not come to you at the time you want them to right so um if you if i quote for an example so uh when i was about when i was doing my entrance for post graduate examination you know so uh i was expected to do wonders because i was i was uh, the best student of the class so you know my teachers uh, they expected me to score the highest and get you know get into aims or pgi or some of the top institutes of the country and um, when i got selected into uh, my branch you know and i did it from indore i did my post graduation from indore so i got selected in the state pg exam my my teachers were not happy so i remember one of my medicine professors saying uh, no i don't expect that out of you you should just take a back seat study again go for it again okay. because you can do better it was a failure not because uh, i did not get anything because i thought that i failed the beliefs of people who have put so much faith in me and i i felt i felt bad you know i i felt that maybe i should not be happy about what i what i've got but um, i thought this is what i have chosen for myself my instinct says it's the right call mm-hmm. and i'll make them feel proud of it when i move forward so so i will convert this into something that they feel that is much better and i deserve it so when i completed my uh, post grad i came back to delhi mm. i did a super specialization so i i did an i joined another course i joined dnb in the same uh, field that i had studied in i wanted to do it again and then then i wanted to do the european exam i wanted to get a european diplomat so i went ahead and i did that so i did not stop there so it was a failure because i i thought that the people uh, who trusted in me they feel that i've let them down but then i tried to convert that failure into success and uh, today whatever i am i'm because of the same branch or the same course that i selected them and uh, i think i took a right call not waiting for another year hmm. so i think sometimes content with uh, what you thought you know your first instinct sometimes is the right instinct sometimes uh, you should not worry about what the world is talking about you mm-hmm. you should not worry that this is a failure because the world sees us that way mm-hmm. if you are not happy with your decision or your call and you want to bounce back you want to wait it out i think you could do that but if you feel the world is not happy about it but you are content i'm sure your satisfaction with your choice will lead you to success later so so that that's the great goes amazing so uh, you know like i i would say i have another question linked to that because you know currently across the world a uh, lot of uh, turmoil is on uh, not only you know personally health issues others uh, but professionally also a lot of people are going through different kind of uh, you know crossroads Uh, so what's your advice uh, for people at large in terms of uh, you know prioritization or in terms of how they could look at this uh, new uh, new normal i would say so um, if you mean uh, in their career in their uh, sense a combination of in the sense of living in life at large yeah yeah so um, you know for those who basically their job profiles changed for people who were doing something else and now they had a complete shutdown i think it has given an opportunity to for everybody to explore something that they never thought of themselves you know mm-hmm. to explore a new avenue to explore a new interest where they are able to invest more time so it has given uh, an opportunity for people to think out of the box 
Sure. We were kind of quite mechanical in what we were doing in our mm-hmm. daily living. Take for instance doctors, you know, we mm-hmm. we are used to seeing patients in our cabin. Mm-hmm. I could never ever imagine not using a stethoscope. Now I'm one person who um, would examine everybody in a fixed format because I don't want to miss out on points. So even if you don't tell me that your nose is blocked and I feel your cough is related to your nose, I will see you. and i will examine it which doesn't happen with uh, with everybody so that's my approach of things you know mm-hmm. so so not being able to examine a patient physically and yet give him heal him offer him help by virtual consult was something that was never dreamt of i i did not even like uh, typing in a uh, you know in a laptop uh, because i thought my hand prescription works well so so i changed it and we changed it we have now got adjusted to the new normal and we are able to do a lot of justice to it and now we feel everybody doesn't need to come all the way down to a doctor's clinic and sit outside and wait because some things can be sorted out on a telephonic interview so mm-hmm. that's the way we change and for other professionals you know so they've found new yeah. new avenues new areas see everybody who is working hard and is dedicated towards uh, achieving something he will find a way Oh. it's if you are dedicated mm. you will find a way it's right. just a matter of time so i would say now we've all got adjusted to the pandemic we we know what we're dealing with and just move on just go ahead with your life and find the ways that you can make a better living out of things and go ahead with it so wow. change your aspects that's right. that's how you will be able to do it wonderful change is the only constant and we need to yes. continuously learn how to deal with every change wonderful so thank you so much uh, dr anshum you know like uh, for making time and uh, of course uh, for telling us how we can lead a nice healthy life in spite of what's going on uh, what is this one you know like mantra success mantra or life mantra that you would like to leave our audience with so um i think this the one mantra would be keep moving don't be static just keep moving keep moving and you will reach where you have to what is destined will come to you keep oh, going wow. awesome keep moving like <laughs> that's uh, really really nice but sorry works works in every aspect you lose weight you stay fit you you keep moving you think keep thinking you keep moving your brain and everything keeps moving you know the life goes ahead so uh, just work on it and it'll be fine wonderful thank you so much and uh, thank you so much thank uh, you all the great work that you are bringing our way uh, looking forward to connect with you in our window yes real soon yeah thank you thank bye you. bye